All right, guys, day eight of Green Bay Packers training camp is here. It was another full padded practice today that went for over two hours. Another very hot practice. So we have a lot to go over on the offense and the defense, as well as special teams in today's practice. Uh, we're going to start off by going over some of the highlights from today's practice, reacting to them, breaking them down. There's not too many highlights, but we do have some. The Packers are back at practice tomorrow. Then they have an off day Friday. And then, of course, family night is on Saturday. I highly suggest you going down and clicking the subscribe button if you're a Packers fan and you're a new viewer here and want to stay in the loop with everything Green Bay Packers. You'll find everything here on this channel, news analysis and updates during training camp and then of course into the season go down click subscribe but before we dive into the video guys if you don't want to stink like the chicago bears this season then today's video sponsor mando is perfect for you what is mando you may ask mando is a whole body deodorant that'll be your best friend this summer and right now through my channel mando has a special offer for you guys you'll get five dollars off their best-selling starter pack with code pack P-A-C-K at shopmando.com. Mando is safe for the entire body and is clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 hours. I really like this pro sport invisible cream deodorant they have here. Mando is also aluminum free, baking soda free, cruelty free, vegan, and dye free. And the Mando starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice, like a mini box body wash or deodorant wipes and also free shipping. So guys, luckily I do have a discount code to get you guys $5 off your first starter pack. That's code P A C K. So pack at shopmando.com to get you $5 off your first starter pack. That equates to over 40% off your first starter pack at shopmando.com. All right. So the first clip we have is before practice and it's Matt LaFleur going up and giving a handshake to none other than Jordy Nelson, who is present at practice today. It seems like every year Jordy Nelson comes to a couple practices. It's nice to see former Packer, you know, at these practices. You can actually see Aaron Nagler is there on the right next to him. I just noticed that as well. So Jordy Nelson at this practice. And of course, you know, when Jordy Nelson's at the practice, Romeo Dobbs going to have a great practice. And he did today. Romeo Dobbs has been a hot topic recently, beating Jair Alexander in a lot of the 1v1s, having a very nice practice yesterday. And it's just been a hot topic because Jair went on to say yesterday that his top two receivers in the NFL are one, Devontae Adams, two, Romeo Dobbs. And here is the man of the hour, Romeo Dobbs, running a deep dig here for Jordan Love. Super quick on that cut, kind of like a speed dig. Uh, Romeo Dobbs, man, super underrated. A lot of people kind of underrate him and don't believe he can be a number one wide receiver on the Green Bay Packers. And I think any of these guys can. And I think week in and week out, we'll see that. Similarly to last year, where it seemed like any week, it could be any one of the five guys that you know leads the Packers in yardage for that week. But Romeo Dobbs, the thing about him last year was he definitely was the most consistent, like the most available as well, right? He didn't really suffer any injuries and week in, week out, he was available to be game planned into the offense. And it seems like he's gotten even better. He seems quicker. He seems better on his routes. Um, and he's just a consistent ball player. And he's going to consistently be there on the offense for Jordan Love to make plays. And he's definitely been making plays for this training camp this offseason. Here we have a clip of the tight ends going through the gauntlet. First you see there is Tyler Davis. I've been very impressed with Tyler Davis through training camp so far. Uh, this guy's thrown some very key blocks to spring some big runs for A.J. Dillon, for Josh Jacobs. Tyler Davis filling in nicely for Tucker Craft, who really wants to return. Matt LaFleur says Tucker Craft's been asking him every single day, hey, can I practice? And he's almost there. Matt LaFleur said in his press conference today, hey, Tucker Craft is almost there. My best guess is we'll probably see Tucker Craft after family night when the Packers return to practice next Tuesday. That's when I think we'll start to see Tucker Craft. I doubt they'll bring him back tomorrow or just on family night. I highly doubt that'll happen. But nonetheless, Tyler Davis filling in nice as well as Ben Sims. Uh, Musgraves looked okay. He had a couple drop issues yesterday, but nonetheless, Musgraves looked fine. But again, Tyler Davis, been impressive, honestly. And 
a little bit of a shock there. Here we have a clip of Jair Alexander working with coach Derek Ansley here. And I, I wanted to include this clip just because I wanted to talk on Jair a little bit. Um, I've seen some tweets basically stating, you know, should we worry about Jair getting beat in 1v1s by Romeo Dobbs so consistently? Guys, 1v1s are made for the wide receivers to win. When you give a wide receiver quarterback combo free reign to choose whatever route they want, no pressure in the quarterback's face, no offensive line, no other defenders on the field, you know, potentially covering up another zone that that route might go into. It's, it's it's made for the wide receiver to win. So no, I'm not worried about Jair getting beat by Romeo Dobbs in 1v1s. You're more so watching the wide receiver to see how they run a route, how they break down on a route, if they're doing the correct things, and more importantly, winning contested catches um, when the ball is thrown, which Romeo Dobbs has done an excellent job at, even in good coverage with Jair on him, he's still come up with the ball. You know, when you when you have a contested catch situation, yeah, you'd like to see the defensive back break that up. But in terms of the 1v1 and how it goes, it favors the offense. So no, not worried about Jair. Here we have a clip of the defense hitting this blocking sled. Starts out with the defensive backs. Looks seamless here then to the defensive line. Guys, this defense has been flying around they consistently are creating turnovers stopping runs at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage not to say that the offense hasn't done well in times or hasn't gone down and scored right today it actually ended in the first team offense scoring to end two minute drills a really nice uh jordan love to tay wicks pass uh but nonetheless man this defense has looked super fast probably one of the most talented defenses we've seen in a long time and i know that's a common thing we say for offseason because we get hyped about this defense. But I, I truly believe this will be, you know, one of the best defenses we've seen in a long time just due to the talent they have and the coaching, more importantly. I think they finally have the coaches in place to allow this defense to succeed. So I only have one 11v11 clip, sadly, from today's practice. Hopefully we'll get more tomorrow. I've been doing my best to try to get as much as I can, even a through-the-fence clip here. It's going to be a Jordan Love deep ball down the left sideline to Christian Watson for the touchdown beating Keyshawn Nixon. So Keyshawn Nixon started to get some snaps at outside cornerback in teams, which is interesting. There was a setup where Stokes and Nixon were in the outside and Javon Bullard came into the slot. Jair stepped off the practice field for a second just to, I guess, give the defense this look. And he gets burned by Christian Watson here. So although, you know, yesterday we saw that love interception where it didn't look like Watson was running the route too hard, he still makes plays like this. It's just we don't get to see all of them because, you know, not every play is filmed. Watson is still making plays in practice. He's still beating Eric Stokes deep or, or, or catching a ball in the back of the end zone over top of Eric Stokes or beating Keyshawn Nixon here on a deep ball. It's not all bad from Christian Watson. I didn't want to make that look that way with that play yesterday. It's just the clip that we ended up having, one of the bad plays from Christian Watson. That's the point of practice. There's good plays and there's bad plays. You work to get better on each rep and a really nice route and catch by Christian Watson here. Obviously a nine route. That's, you know, his his forte here and goes for almost a touchdown here. I guess it was right before the goal line, but still a deep completion. So I also wanted to break down everything that happened in today's practice, kind of merge that video into this one. Just you guys can also be up to date with everything that happened in today's practice. So quickly, let's go over attendance. Um, a new addition to being out of practice was Carrington Valentine today. He was out with the hamstring injury. So uh, didn't want to hear the H word this early into training camp, but Valentine hamstring issue. Hopefully that's nothing long-term. I feel like us Packers fans, man, it's just always, always, always hamstring issue. So hopefully it's not serious. And then Donovan Jennings dropped back out of practice. He returned a few days ago with his knee injury. He dropped back out with the same knee injury. So potentially flared up there. Really wanted to see him continue to practice, but he was out today. And then still out, Deslin Alexander, Keyshawn Banks, Tucker Craft. We already talked about Tucker Craft earlier. Marshawn Lloyd was participating in teams today, so not just individuals. Um, kind of a shaky start, but nonetheless participated in teams. The starters on offense were as follows. Jordan Love, Josh Jacobs. Receivers were Wicks, Reed, and Watson. But don't read into what the starting receivers are. In practice, I mean, they're rotating these guys a ton. So although Dobbs isn't the quote unquote first three in starters today, it doesn't really mean anything. Musgrave at tight end, um, offensive line, Rasheed Walker, Elton Jenkins, Josh Myers, Jordan Morgan, and Kadeem Telford. So 
two days in a row that Jordan Morgan got to start at right guard. Seemingly, he's starting to take this starting spot from Sean Ryan, and he he played well today or practiced well today. Had really good 1v1 reps, which we'll get into. Uh, Morgan's been impressive since the pads have came on. As for the defense, the defensive line, uh, Rashawn Gary, TJ Slayton, Kenny Clark. The linebackers were Quay Walker and Isaiah McDuffie, per usual. The cornerbacks were also the same, Jair, Stokes, Nixon in the slot. The safeties, it was McKinney and Anthony Johnson Jr. today. Although the spotlight has been on the rookie safety a ton. Anthony Johnson Jr. has also been impressive, made a couple of plays today. And as I stated earlier, the, the defense had a couple sets without Jair, which included Nixon and Stokes on the outside. We showed you that Nixon play of him getting burned by Christian Watson with Bullard in the slot. Then Jair also came in for Stokes, but Nixon was still on the outside. So just kind of playing with the versatility of Keyshawn Nixon, it seems, but also allowing Javon Bullard to play some in the slot. As for some 1v1 takeaways, Romeo Dobbs continues to beat Jair. We talked about it earlier in this video. He did twice today, cooked him on the first route, and then on the second route, it was great coverage, but... Dobbs made a diving catch. Uh, Jordan Love connected with Jaden Reed on a deep ball. Keyshawn Nixon in coverage on 1v1s. Uh, Jaden Reed simply just beat Nixon off the line. Uh, McKinney had perfect coverage on a rep against Luke Musgrave. Those two have definitely been going at it in 1v1s. Uh, Kalen King had phenomenal coverage on Samore Torre. Probably like the first time I heard Samore Torre's name even all of training camp. Uh, hurts me. It definitely hurts me, but uh, it seems like that that is long gone. The chance of Samoritori becoming, you know, a, a pivotal wide receiver in this in this room for sure. Uh, Sims had a great move on Javon Bullard uh, and actually went two and zero against Bullard, which is very very impressive. Uh, Heath toasts Don Callis for a deep touchdown. Wayne also toes Don Callis for a touchdown, so <laughs> I think Don Callis might not be on the roster too much longer. Again, this favors the offense, but it's not great to see, you know, you get toasted for two touchdowns rather than two catches. Watson had two wins versus Eric Stokes. Again, furthermore, you know, showcasing that, hey, he does win against Stokes. It's not just bad from Christian Watson. And as I stated, Jordan Morgan looked great in 1v1s. He beat Wyatt two out of three reps, and then he had one rep against TJ Slayton, where he also won that. Now let's go over the offensive notes during practice today. Again, it was a long practice, so there's a lot of uh, notes from the offense and the defense. So let's quickly run through there. To start team sessions, A.J. Dillon had a nice run to the edge um, against Edger and Cooper, beating him to the outside, just kind of showcasing that A.J. Dillon is faster this year. After that, Edger and Cooper did drop out of practice. Didn't have his helmet on, didn't have his pads on, was standing on the sideline. I'm hoping this is just heat, a heat issue or cramping. I'm hoping it's nothing bad. I'm sure we'll get an update tomorrow on Edron Cooper, but he did not return. Tyler Davis continues to block super well. I have that down on my notes. We kind of already talked about it in the clip I had earlier. Been very impressive to me. He's a lock to make the roster due to how well he's been practicing on offense, but not only that, he's a core special teamer. More DeBose splash plays from today's practice. He caught an impressive 50-50 deep ball over Evan Williams and Zane Anderson, but then after that, he was brought on to the first team with Jordan Love and dropped a wide-open flat pass. So, guys, to bring those in if you're going to bring in the tough ones bring in the easy ones as well but DeBose has been impressive definitely fighting for that six wide receiver spot Clifford had some nice throws in practice today he's been getting better the past two days obviously working with the second team now he had a nice pass on a deep corner route to Samori Torre another Samori Torre note here again it's probably like the first two times I've heard of him all of camp Josh Jacobs also had some more impressive runs and you can see how explosive Josh Jacobs has been since the pads came on as for the offensive notes for the two minute drill the two key plays that allowed the offense to go down and score there was a third and two where love found Jaden reed for a 21 yard gain over Keyshawn nixon so nixon really getting burnt a decent bit in teams today then jordan love had a run for 22 yards might have been a would-be sack by rashawn gary but obviously they let it play on and then to end two minute drills love found dontavian wicks in the back of the end zone for the touchdown then they went for two for the win and love yet again scrambled and found wicks in the back of the end zone alone for the win so finding Wicks for the touchdown and the two-point conversion to wrap up two-minute drill, a win for the offense. As for the defensive notes from today's practice, the first play of teams, TJ Slayton blew up a run, was instantly in the backfield to stop Josh Jacobs for a loss. It was a good practice from JJ and Igbari, who did well in 1v1s, but also had a few nice pressures in team as well. Xavier McKinney came up with an interception today on Jordan Love. We saw yesterday in some of the clips we had, Xavier McKinney basically dropped an easy interception. He came up with the interception today on Love, but more importantly, it was against Bo Melton, and Bo Melton didn't give up after the interception, chased down McKinney, and forced a fumble, and the offense recovered. So great effort by Bo Melton.
Melton there, and then also McKinney. The guy's just been around the ball 24-7 during practice. There was another play where Isaiah McDuffie shot into the backfield and stopped Josh Jacobs for a two-yard loss. This has been happening a ton. It would be awesome to have Isaiah McDuffie, you know, ascend into a run-stopping linebacker role on this defense. That would be great. I, I feel like a lot of these linebackers have been practicing well, and that's definitely a big question mark going into this season, what kind of production we're going to get out of these guys. Um, Anthony Johnson Jr. was all over a wide receiver screen to Watson, a loss on the play. As I stated earlier, Anthony Johnson Jr. quietly has been also having a good camp. Again, how much production are we going to get out of the safeties outside of Xavier McKinney? But both safety and linebacker in terms of the unknowns, they've been practicing well. So it looks like uh, we have a lot of talent in both of those rooms. Quay Walker also showed off a ton of speed on a screen pass to the outside to Josh Jacobs. He was all over it for no gain. So continuing the Packers offensive screen game, just really not working. They need to get that fixed. It's been bad for years at this point. There was a swing pass to Josh Jacobs on the outside where Javon Bullard was all over it for a loss. Again, the defense just flying around, just continuing to fly around all of practice. Like anytime there's a quick pass to a running back or a quick flat pass or a screen, like the defense is there. Like they are flying to that ball and either stopping it at the line of scrimmage or stopping it for a loss. Carl Brooks had a sack to start two minute drill. Uh, nice to see him get a sack in practice here. Lucas Van Ness with another sack to start two minute drill on Sean Clifford against the second team. He had a sack yesterday and a sack today. I know a lot of people have been like, where's Lucas Van Ness? Well, he had a sack yesterday and today. Then as for some special teams notes, there's no kicking today. Andres Carlson nor Greg Joseph kicked today, so we don't have any kicking news. Um, but Nixon and Rochelle were the first two up at, at Gunners on punt team. And speaking of punting, Daniel Whelan had some great punts today. He's like the one player on the roster with zero competition, and he really doesn't need it. He's been great all of camp. He was good last year. It seems like the Packers finally have a consistently good punter, and I'm hyped for that. So that does it for all the highlights notes takeaways we have from green bay packers training camp day eight again sorry i didn't have more uh 11 v 11 clips uh, just wasn't able to get them today. Uh, I, I do think we'll be able to get them tomorrow. So be on the lookout for the video tomorrow, the highlights, and also the takeaways. If it's two separate videos or one together, uh, just be on the lookout for it. Turn on post notifications, and you simply won't miss the video. But I appreciate you guys coming by. I'll catch you on the next one. And as always, go back, go.